So now we're checking out concerning objects that are not from this planet. Let's check it out. Archaeologists and scientists have discovered a lot of bizarre things on this planet, but sometimes they discover things that are literally out of this world. From alleged alien aircrafts to a bizarre satellite in space, here are 20 concerning objects that are not from this planet, number 3. Number 20. The Dropa Stones In 1938, a team of archaeologists led by a gentleman allegedly named Chipu Te explored the wilderness of the Bayan Karaula Mountains on the border of China and Tibet. It was then that they stumbled upon bizarre stone discs, each about 12 inches in diameter with a spiral groove emanating from the center to the rim, inscribed with tiny hieroglyphs. These bizarre finds came to be known as the Dropa Stones. They were immediately studied, and yet, initial attempts to decipher these symbols didn't reveal much, and the discovery didn't make waves outside of a few obscure reports. It wasn't until several decades later when a Russian scientist named Dr. Tsumum Nui supposedly cracked the code, or at least that's how the narrative goes. According to Dr. Tsumum Nui, the hieroglyphs tell an astonishing tale of a spacecraft from a distant planet that crash-landed in the Bayan Karaula Mountains 12,000 years ago. The See? occupants, known as the Dropa, found themselves stranded on Earth, and despite their peaceful intentions, were misunderstood and shunned by the local Ham tribes. Dr. Tsumum Nui also claimed that the Dropa Stones are compact disks of ancient knowledge, alien knowledge. Now you're probably wondering why such enigmatic and intriguing stones aren't well known. Well, you see, archaeologists doubt its existence and authenticity. So far, none of these stones are available for study in any known museum or research facility. Is it simply because the stones are part of a hoax? Or perhaps, were they deliberately hidden? I'll let you be the judge. Before we go- I ain't believing that it's all the way. It could be a hoax, but I'm just not taking that at face value. Not these days. For all we know, y'all keeping that under wraps for your own uh, uh, advantage or whatever you get, you stand to gain from it. Something's just not right, and I'm not believing that. One, like this video, smash mm. the subscribe button, and click the no. notification bell right now. Number 19, the Voynich Manuscript. Browsing the pages of the Voynich Manuscript is like seeing information from the other world. First discovered in 1912 by the Polish book dealer Wilfred Voynich, this perplexing piece has been dated to the early 15th century. This manuscript has 240 pages, and it contains sections on herbal, astronomical, biological, and pharmacological topics, each more bewildering than the last. The herbal section shows plants that don't match any known species on Earth. The astronomical section has zodiac signs and what might be stars or planets that are unknown to us. Linguist from all- I think it's a lot of answers to questions that we have about our history and, and, and the past that are in this book. We just haven't, you know what I mean? We, we just haven't unlocked it yet, but I think this book holds a lot of keys. Over the globe have tried to figure out its contents, and even mm -hmm. cryptographers have tried to unravel the mystery behind this book. Despite the myriad of theories, including those that suggest advanced knowledge of botany or astronomy, no mm -hmm. one has convincingly decoded a single sentence of the Voynich Manuscript. Perhaps this is a book that was never meant to be read in the first place. Aside from theories about the manuscript being an extraterrestrial creation, others believe that the manuscript is a book created for scholars to teach about health. Number 18. Or this could be, or that could be another, another Bible. Think about that. The Star Child Skull. The Star Child Skull was initially discovered in the 1930s in a mine tunnel near Mexico's Copper Canyon. However, it wasn't until the late 1990s that this bizarre skull was brought to light by Lloyd Pye. Just as its name suggests, the Star Child skull is bizarre because it's smaller than an average adult human skull. But that's not everything that makes it intriguing. Its bone is significantly thinner but appears to be stronger, with a biochemical composition that is out of this world, quite literally, with an upturned face, reduced cheekbones, and a cranial capacity suggesting a brain larger than that of a typical human. This skull doesn't really look like a human skull. Proponents of the extraterrestrial hypothesis point to DNA testing that reportedly found anomalies suggesting it could be, well, alien. Critics, however, argue that the DNA evidence is inconclusive at best, 
and that many of the skull's peculiarities can be explained by known genetic conditions. The volume of the skull is also a little larger than the average human adult's brain volume. But what's the truth behind the skull? Well, some believe that the star child's skull belongs to an extraterrestrial creature. However, others believe that the explanation for this bizarre skull is simply the result of a genetic condition. They argue that the skull is likely the remains of a child who suffered from hydrocephalus, a condition that can cause the head to swell. They also point to other conditions like craniosynostosis, which can alter the shape of the skull as it grows. So an alien? Or a poor child with a genetic abnormality? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Number 17. The Ayud Aluminum Wedge In 1974, archaeologists discovered the Ayud Aluminum Wedge, a mysterious object found buried beside ancient bones made from a material that shouldn't have existed in the era it was supposedly from. This is among the out-of-place artifacts that were discovered. First off, it's made of aluminum, which, although common today, was not produced in large quantities by humans until the late 19th century. What's bizarre is the fact that the wedge was found in a layer of earth alongside mastodon bones, which are roughly 11,000 years old. Now this aluminum artifact has no business being beside remains that are over 11,000 years old. After all, it wasn't until the 19th century that we learned how to extract and craft things out of it. This wedge itself is a lightweight piece, with a length of about 20 centimeters, or 7.87 inches, made mostly from aluminum with traces of other elements. Its appearance and composition led some to believe it could be a part of a larger mechanism, maybe even something out of this world. While many believe that the Ayud aluminum wedge is alien in origin, others also suggest that it might be something man-made, like, say, a piece of World War II military equipment. It could be, because we could be off on our period of time where we date these things back to. We're wrong. A lot of things that we have dated in time are wrong. And it's okay that we go back and adjust now and change the history books and, and update them, because we're wrong on some things. Which, over time and through unusual circumstances, ended up buried next to much older bones. The area where it was found had seen its fair share of action during the war, making this theory plausible. Number 16. Allen Hills 84001 While many believe that Antarctica is nothing but a frozen and barren wasteland, did you know that it's actually a place where great scientific advancement takes place? A lot of research takes place on this part of the planet, but it's also a great location to spot meteorites. Yes, you heard that right. Antarctica is the perfect place to easily find space rocks. Among the ones we've found so far is a 4 billion year old rock that suggests that Mars had groundwater. Yes, you heard that right. In 1984, a team of scientists scouring the icy wastes of Allen Hills in Antarctica discovered something quite interesting. A meteorite about the size of a potato that weighs about 4.3 pounds. This seemingly unassuming stone had traveled millions of years and millions of miles from Mars to Earth. Years later, in 1996, it was revealed that Allen Hills 84001, or simply ALH 84001, contained what appeared to be fossilized microbes, tiny structures that look suspiciously like bacteria. Now what does this mean? Well, if this is indeed true, it would be the first direct evidence of extraterrestrial life. However, there are several bizarre points about this discovery. Skeptics pointed out that the alleged molecule discovered in the meteorite might not be from Mars, but rather the result of terrestrial contamination. Despite the surrounding controversy, there is debate about the truth of this meteorite. Number 15. Roswell Debris In 1947, rancher Mac Brazel woke up to bizarre debris scattered across his sheep pasture in Roswell, New Mexico. What he found were metallic sticks held together with tape, chunks of plastic-like material, and scraps of a substance resembling paper, but not entirely. He had no idea what to make of the discovery, and turned to the local sheriff for help. However, this discovery is so puzzling that even the nearby Roswell Army Airfield tried to unravel the mystery behind the debris. They released information about finding what they called quote-unquote flying disc on the field, or in other terms, they discovered a UFO. This quickly garnered the attention of researchers, the public, and of course, conspiracy theorists, with many believing that the debris wasn't something ordinary, but rather something that was out of this world, literally. However, 
After the initial interest surrounding the incident, the government dismissed the alleged UFO as a tattered weather balloon. Over the years, as the Cold War turned up the heat on national security concerns, the Roswell incident was dismissed as a bizarre hoax. Everyone thought that it was the end of the Roswell incident, but it wasn't. In the 1990s, interest in the Roswell debris was reignited once again when the U.S. military published reports about the true nature of the project involving the debris. It was part of Project Mogul, a top-secret operation using high-altitude balloons to spy on Soviet nuclear tests. The debris matched the description of the equipment used in these missions. Yet for many, this explanation was nothing but a way to hopefully hide the true nature of the alleged alien balloon. Number 14. The Baigong Pipes In the remote part of Qinghai Province, China, are the Baigongshan Iron Pipes, also known as the Delingha Pipes, or the Baigong Pipes. These mysterious features are a series of pipe-like objects that were believed to be ancient pipes laid out on and near White Mountain, also known as Mount Baigong, located about 25 miles southwest of the city of Delingha. These iron pipes run deep inside the mountain and into the lake, varying in size from tiny, barely noticeable ones to some as large as 40 centimeters in diameter. But what's so bizarre about them? Well, there's the fact that they're estimated to be thousands of years old, which shouldn't be possible considering they're made out of iron along with materials including silica and calcium oxide. Additionally, about 8% of the pipes could not be identified by researchers studying it. This led to conspiracy theories about the pipes being extraterrestrial in origin. The general consensus about these pipes today is that, rather than pipes, they're actually the fossilized tree roots of old trees on the mountains. Mm. For many, this theory makes more sense, but many continue to believe in the paranormal and extraterrestrial theories surrounding the pipes. Number 13. King Tutankhamun's Space Dagger In the 1920s, Tutankhamun's tomb was discovered, and it sparked Egyptomania with everyone focused on the discovery of the never-before-seen tomb of the young pharaoh, one artifact was overlooked, a dagger that was buried alongside thousands of other treasures. This weapon is now known as King Tutankhamun's Space Dagger. The dagger's blade, made of meteoritic iron, was found to have a high nickel content. For so long, researchers were perplexed about the composition of this meteorite. After all, it contains material that seems to be from another planet. With all the theories surrounding ancient Egyptians being connected with extraterrestrials, many believe that the dagger was another gift given by aliens who visited the ancient Egyptians. Now, this might sound absurd. In exchange for what, though? If we're gonna, if we're gonna entertain that that hypothesis about his dagger, then in, in exchange for what? What did he give them? I, I just don't see them just giving him a gift if we're gonna entertain that, and him not giving something in return but there is some truth to this. You see, recent studies revealed that the dagger contained almost the same composition as the Karga meteorite found in Marsa Matru near Alexandria. However, rather than a gift from extraterrestrials, the craftsmanship of the dagger suggests that it may not have been produced in Egypt, but was likely a prestigious gift from the Mitanni Empire to Tutankhamun's grandfather. The dagger's material and the techniques used for its creation hint at a sophisticated level of artisanship. For this reason, many still believe that the young pharaoh's dagger is not human in origin. Number 12. The Black Knight Satellite In the 1950s and 60s, a bizarre legend began to surface. A satellite had been orbiting our planet for the past 13,000 years without our knowledge. This alleged satellite has been called the Black Knight Satellite ever since. You're starting to hear more and more about this Black Knight, aren't y'all? Or is it just me? I wasn't hearing about it at all, but a few videos back I started hearing, now I'm hearing about it everywhere. Now, it's impossible for humans to have sent satellites into space a staggering 13,000 years ago. That's way before any known human technology could have possibly reached space. For reference, the Soviet satellite Sputnik 1 was the first artificial satellite we sent into outer space. One of the most cited pieces of evidence surrounding this satellite is a photograph taken during the 1998 NASA STS-88 mission, showing a peculiar object floating in space. Conspiracy theorists quickly labeled it as the Black Knight satellite, claiming it was evidence of an alien observer. But is it actually one? For some, yes. But for NASA, 
This quote-unquote spy is nothing but space debris, specifically a thermal blanket that had become detached during the mission. Even so, many continue to believe that the Black Knight satellite has been observing us and intercepting signals we send through our own satellite. Number 11. The Baltic Sea Anomaly In 2011, in the northern reaches of the Baltic Sea, nestled between Sweden and Finland, the Ocean X team, led by Swedish explorer Peter Lindberg and his band of treasure hunters, discovered an anomaly at the bottom of the ocean using sonar. This anomaly measured around 200 feet in diameter and was circular with features that, according to the Ocean X team, seemed man-made, or rather, of extraterrestrial origin. The Swedish-based Ocean X team shared what they found with researchers, but the bizarre thing is that information about the anomaly is scarce. Aside from the sonar image provided by Ocean X, there's no other information available about it. It makes sense, considering the said anomaly was found over 295 feet underwater, and so far, no research team is interested in taking the risk to study it, with many believing that it's nothing but a strangely shaped feature on the seabed. The Ocean X team, however, believes otherwise. They describe the anomaly as having straight lines, right angles, and even what appears to be stair-like structures and passages. Not exactly what you'd expect from a natural rock formation. Exactly. Exactly. That's why we know it's more to it than meets the eye. There's something going on there. They also reported equipment malfunctions when they got close to the anomaly, further fueling the mystery and conspiracy theories. Others speculate it could be the remains of a World War II structure or device, considering the Baltic Sea's history during the war. Despite all these theories, the truth behind the Baltic Sea anomaly remains unknown. It could be a World War II ship or something down there that's covered up, but what would make your devices start acting up? See, that's the thing that, that makes me think there's something more to it. Maybe a facility, maybe some extraterrestrial. We don't know, but yeah. Number 10, Bet's Mystery Sphere. In 1974, the Betts family noticed a fire on a field on their property on Fort George Island in Florida. They investigated the small brush fire, and it was then that they came across a small metal sphere the size of a bowling ball. Initially, they believed that the 8-inch, 22-pound sphere came from a cannonball left by New World conquistadors. Thinking it has historic value, they decided to take the sphere back to their house. That would have been the end of this story, if it wasn't for this bizarre situation. One day, Terry Betts was playing the guitar in their home when the sphere reacted to the sound of the acoustic instrument. It strangely made a throbbing noise. This piqued the interest of the Betts family, and they began investigating the ball. They noticed that the sphere seemed to be moving on its own, and Terry also noticed that the sphere would reverberate when hit with a hammer. This bizarre phenomenon led the family to file a report to the local news, the U.S. Navy, and even a panel of UFO investigators including the renowned UFOologist J. Allen Hynek. The U.S. Navy concluded that the sphere was a stainless steel ball, likely part of an industrial valve and not of extraterrestrial origin. Others claimed to have seen spheres being produced by the Bell & Howell Company, further supporting that it was indeed a ball check valve. Despite these examinations, many continue to believe that the Betts Mystery Sphere is something out of this world. Number 9. Dogu Figurines the Dogu figurines are one of Japan's most intriguing archaeological finds, dating back to the Jomon period, which spanned from around 14,000 to 400 BC. These figurines are quite small in size, measuring about 10 to 30 centimeters in height. They're usually made of clay and exhibit a wide range of shapes, bizarre and weird shapes. The Jomon people are believed to be the creators of these figurines. After all, they're known to be skilled in pottery. Early Dogu figurines were quite abstract, featuring simple representations of the human figure. However, by 4000 BC, they began to feature arms, legs, and simple heads, evolving further by 3000 BC to have fully formed faces. You see, these human, or perhaps animal-like figurines are the subject of several conspiracy theories. While many believe that they're symbolic representations inspired by Japanese art, their purpose and significance remain unclear. Archaeologists believe that the figures are religious idols or talismans for health and safe childbirth, toys for children, or funerary offerings. The prevailing theory, however, suggests they were used in rituals. 
possibly related to fertility, given their frequent depiction of female figures with pronounced feminine features. There's also a theory that suggests that the Dogu figurines are actually modeled after extraterrestrial creatures that flew down and interacted with the Joman people. Even so, many believe the more logical theory, but the jury is still out. Number 8. Ubaid Lizardmen The story of the Ubaid Lizardmen is something similar to the Dogu figurines. Unearthed from ancient Mesopotamian sites dating back to the Obeid period circa 6500 to 3800 BC, these artifacts exhibit humanoid figures with distinct reptilian features, such as a long... So we were talking about lizard people that long ago. So when you hear people talk about reptilians and different things like that, don't get all apprehensive and, and want to shoot them down or... or want to down them for talking about it or bringing it up and saying that's not really a thing. Look how far this goes back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You seem more crazier than the person that's talking about reptilians. You not talking about it is more crazier than them. Gated heads, almond-shaped eyes, and lizard-like noses. And just like the Joman people, the people responsible for creating these figurines are renowned for their craftsmanship and immense skill in construction. Just like the obeyed lizardmen, the purpose and significance of these figurines remain subjects of speculation. While some suggest they may represent deities or supernatural beings associated with the obeyed culture's religious practices, others speculate on more extraordinary interpretations, including the possibility of ancient contact with non-human entities. Ever heard of reptilians? These creatures, as their name suggests, are believed to resemble reptiles, but they're capable of hiding their reptilian traits and look somewhat human. Many believe that these suspicious beings have been living amongst us since ancient times. So do the obeyed figurines belong to these reptilians? Well, some believe that these figurines are completely symbolic, but others also believe that they were created after creatures that are out of this world. Number seven. They had to come from somewhere. They had to see something. Wow Signal The Wow Signal was detected on August 15, 1977 by Jerry Emmon, stationed at the Ohio State University's Big Ear Radio Observatory. We've long detected signals from outer space, but this one, as Emmon noted, is quite different. You see, this strong, narrowband radio signal stood out due to its unusual intensity and pattern, leading Emmon to scribble the word WOW complete with an exclamation point next to the signal's alphanumeric representation on the printout, hence its name. The signal's frequency was close to 1,420 megahertz, a range significant because it's the natural frequency of hydrogen, suggesting to some that it might be a universal calling card for intelligent life trying to make contact. Yes, you heard that right. There is a chance that the WOW signal was sent by extraterrestrials. Or should I say, there was a chance. However, recent research revealed that the signal might have been from a hydrogen cloud that passed through the sky area the Big Air was observing in 1977. This natural explanation posits that the comet, being more massive 40 years ago, could have produced a strong enough signal, potentially solving the mystery of the WOW signal's source. A message from intelligent life in outer space? Or a strong signal caused by a normal phenomenon? Well, we're yet to be sure. Number 6. The Fuente Magna Bowl In 1958, the Libation Bowl was discovered near Lake Titicaca in Bolivia. This large stone vessel was used for offerings supported by the beautifully engraved anthropomorphic characters, zoological motifs, and scripts on its surface. For so long, the Fuente Magna Bowl remained in storage in the Museo de los Metales Preciosos until two Bolivian researchers, Argentine Bernardo Biados and Freddy Arce, sought to investigate the origins of the mysterious relic. It turned out that a local pig farmer kept the bowl and even used it to feed his pigs, not knowing about its importance before it was housed in the museum. Now who would have thought that it would become one of the most mysterious and intriguing artifacts in the world? The inscriptions were meticulously analyzed by experts, including Dr. Clyde Ahmed Winters, who suggested that the inscriptions on the cup might represent Proto-Sumerian script, offering a translation that points to a religious or ceremonial use, specifically for making libations to the goddess Nia. However, a lot of mystery surrounds the cup to this day, with some even connecting its bizarre inscriptions to extraterrestrials. Researchers are still investigating and examining this cup. Number 5. 
Oumuamua. On October 19, 2017, astronomers at the University of Hawaii encountered an unexpected visitor that would soon be known as the first interstellar object detected passing through our solar system. This unknown cosmic object was detected by the Penn Stars 1 telescope at the university. Remember that date, the date where they first noticed this. Remember that. Always keep that in your mind. Because if ever one day this thing decides to turn into something and start, you know what I mean, headed towards Earth and, and plants itself here and maybe starts to attack us or something like that, we can, we can go back to that date and be like, man, we've known about this thing since 20 whatever. And it's been right there in front of us under our nose for this long, this length of time. And we just didn't do anything. We didn't try to figure it out. We didn't try to send something to it. We didn't try to go in depth. Maybe they are, and we just don't know about it, but I don't feel like we are doing enough. I don't feel like we're trying to really understand what this is. It's not, in my opinion, just space debris. Needless to say, it's an intriguing object. You see, aside from the fact that this is the first interstellar visitor that came into the solar system, we are unable to properly classify the Oumuamua. It was initially thought to be a comet, but further observation revealed mixed results. Oumuamua showed no signs of cometary activity like a tail or a coma after its close pass by the Sun, leading to its classification as an asteroid. However, its slight acceleration, not accounted for by gravitational forces alone, hinted at behavior more typical of comets. The intrigue around Oumuamua doesn't stop at its classification. Its physical properties are unlike anything observed in our solar system. This elongated cigar-shaped object, estimated to be up to one quarter mile long, has an aspect ratio as high as 10 to 1, which has never been observed among known asteroids and comets before. What's more, its surface is dark red, similar to objects found in the outer solar system, suggesting a composition rich in organic compounds that have been irradiated by cosmic rays for hundreds of millions of years. So what exactly is this object? Comet? Asteroid? Or alien spaceship that somehow just passed through our solar system? Well, we're yet to know. Number 4. The Walls of Sacsayhuaman On the northern outskirts of the city of Cusco in Peru is the walled complex of Sacsayhuaman, this archaeological site is known for its remarkable large dry stone walls. Now you're probably thinking about how there's nothing bizarre about these walls. And you'd be right. By today's standards, these walls might not look like anything special, but considering these were built over six centuries ago, they're incredibly impressive. These terraces and walls weigh up to 200 tons, and they're among the largest used in any building during that period. Each of the stones that make up the walls is carefully cut to fit together tightly, without mortar. Yes, these walls forming a zigzag pattern were built with such precision that a single piece of paper cannot fit between many of the stones. That's easy to do in modern times, thanks to precise lasers and water cutters. But centuries ago? Just imagine the manpower it took just to lift the boulders, much less cut them into the perfect size and shape. For so long, these interlocking shapes were a puzzle for scientists. Research and experiments suggest that the Incas may have used wooden templates to precisely cut and shape the stones before placing them into the wall. This involved creating a wooden outline of the gap in the wall, which was then used to mark and cut the new stone with high accuracy. But could they have accomplished such an incredible feat on their own? Or did the Saxe Woman people receive help from a race way more advanced than people at the time? Number 3. Pumapunku Pumapunku, a part of the ancient Tiwanaku site near Lake Titicaca in Bolivia, is another pre-Columbian archaeological wonder that has baffled historians and archaeologists. The term Pumapunku translates to Door of the Puma. It's believed that this ancient site was built between 700 and 1000 AD, at the height of the Tiwanaku Empire, which dominated the region and extended its influence over parts of Bolivia, Peru, and Chile. The stonework used in the creation of this site is astonishing. The site features terraced earthen mounds lined with intricately carved red sandstone blocks that are believed to have shone brilliantly under the sun. The blocks comprising the walls of Pumapunku are estimated to weigh as much as 280,000 pounds. Now what's bizarre is the fact that these stone blocks were mined an astonishing 6.2 miles away from the site. 
Smaller rocks were also obtained a staggering 55 miles away from the Pumapunku. How did these people, with no modern tools or technology, manage to mine and obtain the stones? Much less craft them into walls with insane precision. Some of these walls- We're still trying to figure that out for the pyramids. <laughs> How did they move the stones like that? Those huge, big, big stones. Walls have socket-like holes, leading some to believe that the people who created the blocks comprising Pumapunku possessed advanced knowledge that was unusual for their time. Or they were giants. Number two. Moai Statues of Easter Island The Moai statues on Easter Island have become iconic symbols all over the globe. However, these heads remain shrouded in mystery and surrounded by conspiracies to this day. Also known as Rapa Nui, these massive monolithic human figures were carved by the Polynesian inhabitants of the island sometime between 1250 and 1500 AD. Most of these impressive statues were crafted from tough compressed volcanic ash from Rona Varaku a volcanic crater that served as a quarry for 95% of the island's moai. These statues are known for their rather large features. A large broad nose, strong chin, rectangular ears, and deep eye slits. For a long time, researchers have been puzzled about whom these statues represent. Polynesian ancestors or visitors from another planet? And now it's time for today's topic. Now take a look at this photo captured by a passenger aboard a flight from Queenstown, New Zealand in 2015. As you can see in this photo, it looks like a massive floating anomaly. It could easily pass for a cloud if it weren't for its bizarre texture and the appendages hanging from below, making it look like an extraterrestrial jellyfish floating in the sky. Several eyewitnesses also claimed that when they tried to take a photo of the said flying quote-unquote UFO, all their photos turned out blurry almost as if an unseen force was preventing them from taking a clear shot of it. To this day, this is among the concerning objects that are not from this planet, or at least, that's what many believe this thing to be. After all, no one seems to be capable of explaining this bizarre phenomenon. I was about to say, I don't even know where to begin looking at this thing to be able to try to decipher what it could be. I don't even know where to start. But if you guys have any theories, Feel free to share them in the uh -huh. comments down below. None. Number one, our message to the aliens. Humanity hasn't only been waiting for aliens to communicate with us. We've been proactive about establishing a connection as well. As early as 1974, SETI researchers Frank Drake and Carl Sagan created the Arecibo message. This is now known as the most renowned and strongest signal we ever sent to space. For those curious, the Arecibo message was a binary coded communication containing basic pertinent information. It included a human stick figure, representations of DNA, the solar system, and a graphic representation of the telescope. So, did we receive any answers? Well, so far, it seems that we're still waiting for a return call. But who knows? We might receive a response soon. Do you think it's wise for us to reveal more about humanity through signals sent to outer space? After all, if there is a sentient and possibly more advanced race out there, they could easily use that information for harmful purposes.